Jack Bobo joins us now. He's the CEO of Futurity, a company that studies food and agricultural trends. Uh, Jack, talk to us about this campaign because food waste, if it ends up in the landfill, it starts to rot, it creates methane. So eliminating wasted food can also help in the battle against climate change. Yeah, absolutely. As much as a third of all the food produced on the planet is wasted, and so that's just a tremendous waste in many ways. You know, that's over a billion tons of food. And to put that into perspective, that the value of all that food that's grown and processed and then thrown away is about a trillion dollars. So it impacts, you know, both the cost of food and food security, uh, but then it also contributes about 8% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So a really big footprint. Jack, this is such a serious issue, but it's also intertwined with our culture. I mean, here in the United States, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. And if you look on social media, you see all your relatives and friends with these huge spreads, tons of food. It looks great, looks appetizing, but you know, some of it's going to go to waste. How do we turn the tide on the attitudinal piece of this? Yeah, you know, it, it's hard, but, you know, culture has changed a lot over the last 50 years, you know big portion sizes have become the norm. And so we, we have to tackle it in a lot of different ways. It's not one problem, it's hundreds of small problems and we need to address each of them. Uh, you know, On the beginning end of that, not creating food that's going to be wasted, uh, making sure that we have a better understanding of sort of how much food do we actually need. And you know, we can do that through portion sizes and other things. The more food you produce during the holiday season, if you have 10 different dishes, people are gonna try everything. On the other hand, if you only have three or four dishes, people are going to be able to make a better assessment of how much food they should eat and eat the right amounts. So, you know, thinking and planning ahead is, is critically important. But there are a lot of things that grocery stores are now doing and tools for our household that can actually uh, reduce uh, food waste as well. Can you talk a little bit about those tools? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we have countries like France that have um, not quite banned food waste from grocery stores, uh, but they have strongly incentivized uh, grocery stores first to uh, they can sell whatever food that's about to expire or they can partner with local food organizations to make that food freely available. And, you know, this makes a lot of sense. Instead of throwing away food that's, you know, not quite ready or that's gonna expire, you know, let's use it for a useful purpose. So that's one way that grocery stores are doing it. But there are some new digital tools that are around now that allow you to go on the app and you can actually look for food that is going to be discarded by different organizations. It could be a grocery store, it could be a hotel, it could be a restaurant, and you can basically shop for food that you know is a third cheaper um, than it would normally be if it was fresh. And so again, that can help people that are on tight fixed food budgets, but it can also turn something that was a cost, is disposing of waste, into an asset for those grocery stores and other businesses. Jack, I know this is an issue that you're passionate about. You know, in April, the country of China adopting this law against food waste, but, but it's not an issue we hear a lot about here in the United States. Does it need to be uh, more topical where people are actually discussing this? Because it doesn't seem like it's that, that top of mind of an issue here. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a really important issue. You know, we talk about trying to get people to eat less beef or do other things that are going to have an impact on greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. But a third of all the food that we're buying is just going into the landfill. You know, we could continue to do exactly what we do if we could address this huge problem. And so it, it definitely needs to be addressed. Um, you know, and it's just, it'll save people money as well. Often people don't understand what best buy dates mean on their food. So they think of it as an expiration date. So, you know, you open up the package and say, oh, it's two days expired, I gotta throw it out. No, that's not true at all. That's a best buy date. That means it's at its peak freshness before that date, but it's perfectly safe to eat most of that food well after the, uh, the date on the package. And if people understand that, then you know their, their dollars will go further as well. Yeah, really good point. Jack, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.